Good morning, gang. Hope you're having a good start to your day. So I have some Yankees news. I put out a short this morning on it, but for those that haven't seen it, I want to give you some insight into it today. And also want to talk about something that's been going on right now that's being put into place for the next collective bargaining agreement, this next CBA, which doesn't happen until 2026, but um, this is a work in progress, and it's the revenue sharing model for the Yankee, for baseball, but in particular the Yankees. And Randy Levine made us think about this recently, complaining about teams like um, – the Marlins and the Rays, who are big recipients of revenue sharing, who don't, don't necessarily do much to put fans in the stands, right, to boost their payroll. I and mean, even Miami's been been on – it's one of the reasons they lost Kim Eng, right? So not the only reason they lost, but one of the reasons they did. And then we know the Rays average one of their lowest attendance rates in baseball. So this stuff's going to be – more aggressively talked about over the next couple of years in the CBA. So stay tuned. Okay. Make sure hit that subscribe button. So I not only not only talk about uh, breaking news and, and free agencies and trades and, and everything, all things Yankees and other teams, but I talk about uh, this stuff too, because I wanted to give you a better understanding of what those, what's going on, why teams do things that they do, why teams don't do the things that they do, particularly the Yankees. So first piece of news, Yankees. You know who this guy is? This is Yuki Matsui. Okay, he's a top reliever in Japan. He's got a career about a 240 ERA. He averages about 12 strikeouts per nine innings. And he's uh been eligible to be posting to come over to the major leagues. And the Yankees are officially in on him now. Why do I mention it? Because generally, I don't know if you notice this, but when the Yankees talk about um actively talk about guys that they're in on or, or working on and blah blah blah, um, in my opinion, less things happen for agency trades and they just make less moves and when other other sources are talking about it and the Yankees are not talking about it that's when the Yankees tend to be a little bit more aggressive actively and the Yankees are quiet and they have been quiet and other sources are providing us this information on the Yankees that's generally when we see some more activity with the Yankees so when the Yankees talk more they usually do less when they talk less they usually do more so I just found it to, uh, noticeable I don't know if you agree with it. Let me know if you do. But they're in on Yuki Matsui, which is a good thing. So, again, he might replace Wendy Peralta if he doesn't come back. I think they're going to non-tender most of the arbitration class. So there's going to be some people that they need to bring back. I don't know if they're going to uh, non-tender Lou Trevino yet. He's going to come back from Tommy John. But he's te- he's projected to make $4 million bucks. So my guess is they probably will non-tender him as well as a bunch of other guys. So they'll be freeing up a lot of payroll for moves like this. And might not only replace – Guy like Wandy Peralta, who was a reliable piece for the Yankees, but this may be a sign that they're not going to invest twenty plus million dollars a year for a guy like Josh Hader. So, just a thought, but we'll see what happens here. But I wanted to get you up update on that one. Now, you know who this guy is. He's universally hated as the commissioner of baseball, right? So, um, there's an economic reform committee being formed right now in baseball, with the goal of being able to put forth some significant movement in terms of uh, revenue sharing and things around it in baseball for the new CBA, which doesn't, the next CBA is not until 2026. So, but in order for a, an actual formal proposal to happen, 23 out of 30 teams have to be on the same page. You need 23 votes out of 30 just to get an official proposal. And when it comes to the revenue sharing, it's either going to be a salary cap or a salary floor. The union is probably never going to decide with a salary cap because that limits the pay on top players. Okay, Salary floor, I don't know if they'll be as amenable, but I don't think they'll be as resistant to because it also requires teams to invest the money that they receive in revenue sharing, which they don't right now. It's not mandated by baseball, which uh, it doesn't surprise me why teams like the Yankees who give 10% of their revenues at least – and their annual revenues, so they're giving upwards of sixty to hundred million dollars every year into revenue sharing, that a lot of teams pocket and don't spend on payroll. I would be pissed off too. It seems like the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Cubs, the high spending teams, they also pump into this stuff. And the major beneficiaries are, are, are A's and the Rays and the Marlins, teams that don't do much with all this extra money that they get, this free money. A lot of luxury suites, right? A lot of private jets, but like. Not a lot of fans, so like, you know. So this is something that's 
a lot of the owners of the bigger teams. And again, a lot of the owners of the bigger teams and the bigger spenders tend to be are the members of this economic reform committee that's being formed. OK, and they want to try to get a proposal put forward. And I, we pretty much know already the salary cap is very likely not going to happen. But if you have a salary floor, it's going to require teams to spend at least a certain amount of money on payroll. So the teams that don't really spend at all are going to be required to spend more. You'll have better played players, especially on the bottom end. So, and notice a lot of craziness about $40 million players, $50 million players. Like, but you have guys in the bottom. And I know they just did stuff with, you know, our, um, the pre arb and arb salaries and all this stuff. They just raised that in the last CBA. But what about the other guys? Like the $2 million year guys might be $3 million guys. The $5 million guys might be $7 million year guys, like moving forward. So, because these teams receive tens of millions of dollars for the most part in revenue sharing from teams like the Yankees, okay, who could be spending it on payroll, okay? And so that's probably another thing they're going to talk about. But the, 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 the Economic Reform Committee is something that's being seriously discussed right now. But, again, you need 23 out of 30 votes from all 30 teams in order to put forward a seriously legitimate proposal to make it official. So – and revenue floor, I think, is going to be the one that's going to be the more discussed, more credible option uh, on a salary cap floor or salary floor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and again, salary cap, I, I can't see happening. I don't think the union or the players will ever stand for that because, again, it's going to limit the salaries of the top players. So, but a salary floor, especially if you attach penalties to teams who just pocket the money and don't spend on payroll, it might be a little bit more of a motivating factor towards them actually investing in players. You wonder why teams don't spend. I mean, we hear fans on the Yankee side talking about Yankees don't spend. They're the number one in almost every single year in terms of how much money they give to other teams in terms of revenue sharing. And I'm going to talk about this in, in, in greater detail on Friday night. I have a guest coming on Friday night. We're going to talk about the Yankees' finances and spending and all the stuff, and it'll hopefully give folks a better understanding of why they do things and why they don't do things and stuff. So – be ready for that because that one's going to be insightful. It's going to be an important conversation to have, an important conversation for people to listen to and hear. So maybe it'll, it will give people a little bit of a better understanding of certain things. So, But this is happening right now actively, right behind the scenes. And again, the revenue sharing model is, a, is, is has become a problem, more so obviously for the big spending teams who spend on their payroll. Well, and it's, it's becoming a problem because the teams at the bottom who already have billionaire owners are pocketing like the A's owner and some of these other teams, like the Orioles, okay? They receive lots of revenue sharing. They got a good team, but they don't spend, which is why they have the number one farm in baseball. So they're likely going to have to make majority of their moves this offseason in trades because they don't want to spend on payroll, okay? And when billionaires like that act super cheap, these are the types of problems that happen. And again, who's going to make us think about it? The teams that do spend, and rightfully so. So this is it's it's a it's an important conversation. It's one that's going to, I'm going to go into more detail about. But I wanted to let you know that this reform committee is taking place right now, and things are being set up in such a way so that they can maybe have some something of significance in the next CBA, which happens in 2026. So, and that's the Yankees news. Okay, I will keep you fed in on everything. Yankees, non-Yankees, all this type of stuff as it pertains to baseball. If you're a baseball fan, you're going to get as much information as you can handle. So much important information as you can handle. So have a great day, everybody. If anything else comes out, you'll get it here. Talk to you next time.